This is Mitch with Compass Tools and we are going to configure the new Trimble R2 GNSS receiver for use in Esri's collector app. Step one is to turn the R2 on using the power button and then we'll jump over to an Android phone. For this recording I'm using the Samsung Galaxy but the workflow should be similar on other Android devices and uh, I've kind of ordered these in the steps you'll need to take number one you go into settings and enable mock locations number two you will use GNSS status to configure real-time corrections on the R2 and number three you'll close status and jump into collector so GNSS status is a free app from Trimble on an Android device you'll download it from the Google Play Store before we jump into GNSS status we'll go into settings and we'll need to go all the way to the bottom and we need to access the developer options uh, this may not be turned on by default so sometimes uh, you'll have to google this uh, sometimes you tap your kernel version five times or something odd but that will enable developer options and it may be different for different devices so again you'll have to google that but then once you're in developer options you need to allow mock locations so that your android device can use the R2 locations which are better than the internal locations so after enabling mock locations you can jump into GNSS status and it says no receiver connected we'll select a new one and it even reminds you to turn your Bluetooth on so I'm gonna swipe down here and turn on my Bluetooth and I don't believe we need a pair here so I'm just gonna cancel do a little refresh in GNSS status and it should show you devices within range uh, I'm gonna check the last five of my serial number and this is R2 with this serial number and you say connect alright uh, one thing you do want to check with GNSS status is to go to about and make sure you got at least version 2 or newer and to provide submeter corrections to collector we'll need to enable a real-time setting and I'll say edit so SBAS is a free real-time correction from the FAA should get you submeter accuracy on the R2 uh, but SBAS requires a, a line of sight to the south so if, if you're on the north side of a building it may not work uh, so Trimble also has a similar service it comes over satellite again has the same restriction if you can't see south you may not get this correction so that's why RTX is also available over the internet should get you submeter and possibly better on the R2 uh, or if you live next to a base station or in a VRS network you can dial that up here but we'll just go for SBAS and say save then we'll go back to the home screen and see that I'm getting 84 centimeters indoors uh, with the R2 and SBAS. So we're good with GNSS status. We can jump over to collector. And I'll just open a map. We can ignore this about wireless. The R2 does not need help from uh, wireless and we can start mapping data we'll click on the plus we'll mark a power pole and uh, to prove that we're getting submeter accuracy we can go to the settings in collector and see that I've required a, a two meter accuracy that's as low as I can go on this version of collector but uh, I am recording a location so that means a collector has decided that the location from the R2 is 
better than two meters accurate. So we're able to mark this pole, fill in the attributes, and save it. The same is true for line and area features. I can grab a, a line feature and I can stream the locations or I can mark vertices. I can check and see that uh, two meter accuracy is still required on the line feature. So the fact that it is recording this line feature means that collector is happy with the accuracy of the R2 and we're ready to map all day. That's it for this recording. If you have uh, questions you can check out our blog or for specific questions you can email support at compasstoolsinc.com.